Thank you to Walker Bueller as always. Exciting stuff coming down the pipe. You haven't heard the last of Walker Bueller. I will leave it at that. The Baltimore Orioles are the team with possibly the brightest future in all of baseball. They were incredible this past year. They won the American League East with a team whose window was not supposed to open this past year. The year before that, they were kind of the darling of Major League Baseball. And you called it. You said the Diamondbacks were going to be the next Baltimore Orioles. The Diamondbacks did exactly that. Now the Orioles look like a heavyweight and a true World Series contender if they make a couple of moves that the baseball world has been begging them to make. We're going to delay the inevitable. I think we've pitched this exact trade on the podcast like five or six times, but I'm going to make you wait for it. I'm going to run you through like the whole spiel. Yeah. 2023, the Baltimore Orioles payroll was $71 million. This year, they up it to right around $100 million. It's just under $100 million when you factor in arbitration and pre-arb estimates. Before we get into the transactions, I do want to note a couple of arbitration guys and the numbers that they just came in at. By the way, did you see the Tigers and Casey Mize are going to an arbitration hearing over like 25 grand? I'd love to be a fly in the room for that one. Oh, God. How about, the, so how, about the, how about the Marlins and Luis Arias also going to trial and Vladdy? And, and now they might trade him? I I can't believe what the Marlins are doing. They I, finally get the hitter, and it's been so long. And now they're like, wait a minute. Shit, I forgot. We got to pay oh, him. God, yeah. I oh, forgot God. you need to pay for talent. This <laughs> sucks. This sucks. Where's the free talents? This the sucks. dude just hit 350. We were sitting here with a 400 chase at the All Star break, yeah. and you won't pay him. And you already I, traded Pablo Lopez. Pay him. Jesus. Dude, like th- this fucker, this fucker just wanted like nine mil. Just give him nine mil. It's not 30, it's nine. The Yankees just paid Soto 31. <laughs> The biggest deal in arbitration history, beating Shohei Otani's $30 million, and you won't pay Luis Arias nine? Give me a break. I also just don't know how Soto can up Otani by a million dollars. You cannot convince me that Soto's value this year is greater than Otani's value last year. I don't know. No, of course. Yeah. No, it's I mean, hard. holy Market, shit. It's just the next cornerback or the next point guard. Or it's just yeah. the next best player just gets more. I guess my pushback was like, okay, the free agent market, I agree, but like the arbitration market, but I guess the arbitration market just keeps on pushing and pushing as, as we get further on. I think Juan Soto could have gotten anything he wanted at arbitration from the Yankees. Do you think they want to put a bad taste in his mouth? No, absolutely not. not at all? Yes, yes, yes. So he just said, I need more than Otani, and they're like, fine, whatever. All right. Sure. And, and it's not going to be $30 million and $1. It's going to yeah. be $31 million. Uh, notable arbitration numbers for the Baltimore Orioles. Anthony Santander is a Super 2 guy. He is in his final fourth year of arbitration. He's going to make about $11.7 million. In ARB 3, John Means got 3.325. Ryan O'Hearn, Danny Coulomb, also in ARB 3. ARB 2, Cedric Mullins just got about $6.25 million. They also have Jorge Mateo, Austin Hayes, Dylan Tate in ARB 2. Ryan Mountcastle came in at $4.1 million in his first year of arbitration. So those numbers add up, like Ara mentioned with the Marlins, and, and the Orioles do feel those numbers adding up. But notable transactions... Before going down, maybe while he was down, the Orioles signed Felix Bautista to, to a two-year, $2 million deal. He's going to miss the entirety of this year. He's out of mill this year. He's out of mill in, in ARB1. They claim your guy Tucker Davidson, our guy Tucker Davidson, and Sam Hilliard off waivers. They signed Craig Kimbrell to a one-year, $13 million deal with a club option at $13 million in 2025. It's, it's a lot. I love that it's a club option because Bautista is going to be back He's pretty much the bridge man for Bautista at 13 mil. Overall, the offseason, we're waiting on the big trade to go down. But, you know, if you can scrub that from your mind, how do you think it's gone so far? I mean, not very good. I mean, why did you go get Craig Kimbrell? Why'd you pay him $13 million? You have a closer. Yenny or Cano. He can be your closer. And then go get someone like a Lou Trevino. Go get someone like Robert Stevenson. There are plenty of relievers who aren't going to cost that and ask a Phillies fan how much they enjoyed Craig Kimbrell. Now the numbers are fine, right? But he, he's going to make you 
scared to watch the ninth inning every single outing, which arguably makes them more entertaining for a fan on the outside looking in. But for a Baltimore Orioles fan, I would not be excited about that contract. And then that's the offseason. Like, we have to do a little bit more to this team. The offense, we're going to go through, we basically don't have to touch. And they're not going to touch it either because they have an entire other offense in the minor leagues, which they could realistically bring up. But we got to make about two trades for starters, add a reliever, and we're done. But this team, overall, I was a little bit negative on the offseason so far. It's not over, number one. Number yeah. two, this team is loaded. They so, didn't need to do anything. But I just, I really disliked the Craig Kimbrell signing. Did you like it? What are they doing with that? Um, and I, a team like the Orioles, who never spends money, wants to give Craig Kimbrell $13 million? What? I think they wanted a closer, and they didn't want to pay haters. So I think what they did is they went out and they got They have one. Maybe. Do they? Or do they have one of the better setup guys in baseball? Yes, they do. But then they could get two legitimate seventh and eighth inning guys have Cano instead of because the Orioles don't have that much money to spend. I feel like I know. that was their bullpen spend. But I'm a, I'm asking you, so I said, do they have a closer for 2024? And you said yes, yeah. in your Cano. I don't know if that guy's like a full-time closer, one of the better closers in baseball. I think they wanted a guy who can handle the ninth inning. I think Cano can be one of the better eighth inning guys in baseball. He was that last year. But you got to remember, dude, like this guy ha- like got blown up in his first taste of Major League Ball. He was fine in AAA the year before that. Like he- this is kind of a flash in the pan thing. I hope it continues. I expect it to continue because it does feel like he's figured something out. 2022, he was really good in AAA. 2023, he was amazing in the Major Leagues. But that was his rookie year, man. Like who's to say? And you know how volatile this is. I can't pencil Yenier Cano in for a 30 save season in a low two ZRA. Just can't do it. Can you pencil in Kimbrell for that? No, but you can pencil him in for a veteran presence on the back end of a bullpen. Who do you think would be the better closer in 2024? Yenier Cano or Craig Kimbrell? Cano, but it's kind of nice to hedge it with another guy. No, but I'm saying you get, you get, you put Cano in the closer role and then you get two other legitimate setup options who can then close if, if need for be. some reason, he falters. Like, so Robert like the Stevenson Marlins can close games. Yeah, like a Marlins thing, which ended up working because Tanner Scott just took the world by storm. They, I think they should have done that. But again, it's marginal, right? I want to get to the real team. Yeah. I, For a team that doesn't spend that much money, I, I did not get it at all. But we'll see. The, the other thing is they want to win the World Series in 2024. And they went and got a guy that was on a Hall of Fame track at, at one point. Yeah, they want to. Every team wants to. But are they going to action speak louder than words? Yeah, but I mean, dude, they won the hardest division in baseball this past year without like that guy that we're going to go. And then they got blown up by the Rangers. Like if they want to win a world series, the time is now to go spend some money or at least make some trades. I mean, not not making trades makes no sense. Yeah. No sense. Um, They may be scared, but we'll see. Walking through the offense, Adley Rutschman, James McCann is the catching tandem, not touching it. Ryan Mountcastle. You don't want to float Adley in trade talks. No, I'm good. (laughs) I'm good. If you floated Adley, I would book a flight i would knock on your door and i'd sucker punch you imagine I'd say, that one's for adley and ellie de la cruz <laughs> imagine the return you get for him though dude <laughs> moving on first base platoon ryan mountcastle ryan o'hearn okay i like it not touching it ryan mountcastle hits 340 with an ops at about 1050 against left-handed pitching if you can create like a true platoon and o'hearn is an 800 ops guy against right-handed pitching if O'Hearn doesn't really work out, you've got Heston Kerstad there, who played a yeah. good bit of first base. He's a lefty bat. It's either Kerstad and Mountcastle or O'Hearn and Mountcastle. Can't, Amazing. Can't Kobe Mayo contribute to first two? <laughs> yes. Um, Mayo can. Mayo can also contribute to third base. Yeah. Like, we'll There's see. so many. Like, that's they why we so can't go get Reese Hoskins if we don't love Ryan O'Hearn, which I don't have a problem with him. We, we can't touch it. They have too many options also in the minor leagues. Let's also make this abundantly clear. There are three do not contact me about these guys in the Orioles system. Jackson Holiday, yep. Samuel Basayo, the catching prospect, and Kobe Mayo, 
who is a corner infielder. You wouldn't potentially trade that catching prospect when you literally have Adley Rutschman? No. No. No, because Adley's fly. Adley's going to cost $200 million. Do you think the Orioles are going to pay Adley Rutschman $200 million? They better. Do it for once. He's generational. They did, it, they did it with Chris Davis. That's the thing. Their yeah. one big deal was fucking Chris Davis. Do you know how scarred I would be if my one deal that I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's bust out the paycheck, Mr. Angelos. Chris Davis. Charmin Ultra Soft. You got to put money back in the market. I'm with you, but <laughs> I just want to present the uh, the opposing viewpoint. But Basayo, even if you do sign Adley long-term, Basayo is probably the first baseman of the future, and then Kerstad becomes expendable. Second base, some assortment of Jordan Westberg, Jorge Mateo, Connor Norby, Jackson Holiday, good with it. Third base, some assortment of Gutter Henderson, Jorge Mateo, Ramon Arias, Kobe Mayo, good with it. Shortstop, Gunnar Henderson, Jackson Holiday. It's an holy inc- hell. It's an incredibly good and young lineup. It is just, it is just overwhelming. As of right now, you can factor Joey Ortiz in too, but I'm about to trade his ass right quick oh, yeah, in a he's moment. Gone. He's gone. Yeah. Outfield, Cedric Mullins, Austin Hayes, Anthony Santander in his final year of control. Heston Kerstad, Colton Kowser, Ryan McKenna, Sam Hilliard, Kyle Stowers. It's overwhelming the number of bats they have. Two, maybe three years ago, Cedric Mullins was one of the best players in Major League Baseball. And now he's just, he might be the odd man out in this outfield. Because Austin Hayes and Anthony Santander are both beasts. Hayes is and a so, sneaky dog. I need Hayes people to understand dog. that. Absolutely. And then you have Kowser, you got Kerstad, you got just so many players in the pipe. That's why it could be the easiest thing in the world to trade all of these guys in order to get pitching. And they're probably going to sit on their hands and do nothing. And it's going to make me unreasonably upset because it's right there. It's right there. But we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Starting rotation as of right now. Kyle Bradish, Grayson Rodriguez, John Means, Dean Kramer, Cole Irvin, Tyler Wells, and then you've got Cade Povich, Chase McDermott, Seth Johnson kind of waiting in the wings. I want to cut Cole Irvin from this discussion, and we do that by adding a frontline guy. I would love to push Bradish back to the two, Grayson back to the three, Means to the four, and Dean Kramer to the five with Tyler Wells as their six because we're going to add Dylan Cease to the fold, who just signed... $8 $8 million to avoid arbitration. He'll get about 12 or 13. Two years for $21 million. Colton Kowser Dude, nobody and Joey wants, Ortiz. Nobody wants Dylan Cease, apparently. Are you sure? <laughs> apparently, MLB Network and like all the reports are like, hey, the Orioles really want Dylan Cease. Go do it. It's going to no, cost you Kowser and Ortiz. Think about it. Think about it. Do you actually think that Dylan Cease and the Orioles is going to happen? Think about it. The White Sox... They asked the Yankees for Spencer Jones and Chase Hampton. Now that's um, two top 100 prospects. The Orioles could do it, but I guess the asking price for Dylan Cease, according to teams, is too high. A team like the Orioles, who barely want to make a trade anyway, do you think they're meeting the asking price of a team that is asking for an arm and a leg for a guy? Like, no shot. I mean, dude, like, you have the capital to not feel it. Not feel it at all. We how, does Kowser, do it. how does Kowser and Joey Ortiz impact the Baltimore Orioles in 2024? No idea. Just go give them to the Chicago for Dylan Cease. Or we can go get Burns. You want to go do that? We could also go get Lizardo. Could go get Lizardo. Because I'm I'm curious if the Orioles want maybe some younger options here. I know Cease is still relatively young maybe they go after logan gilbert um i know the mariners could still use some bats and i've been watching these bryce miller bullpens his new splitter nasty and then you got brian (laughs) you got Luis castillo like logan gilbert could be expendable because he is a free agent soon if i'm the orioles i would among all of these pitchers burns would be my best option but he's a free agent after the year and he's still going to be expensive i would go i would want lazardo from the Marlins. Let's do it. He's apparently available. I would love Lizardo. Lizardo seems best case scenario. I want Lizardo more than I want Cease. So, and they could also use a lefty too, right? You got Bradish. 
you got Grayson. And if we're kicking Cole Irvin out, we only really have John Means. And John Means hasn't proven that he's able to stay healthy. So I would love to add a lefty in here. I think Lazardo is the perfect option. Years of control, still young, not a ton of miles on the arm, electric, nasty pitcher. I would want him. Yeah. Also, real quick, Bryce and Miller. Of, and think about why also I want more lefties in the Orioles. Because when you face the Orioles in Canman Yards and Lazardo is on the mound, you're going to put in a lot of right-handed bats to counteract Lazardo, right? Good luck hitting a home run in that in that ballpark when you're a righty. It's just yeah. so hard because left field is so far away. So that's why I want to add more lefties in this pen, and he is the perfect option. Also, real quick on that Bryce Miller thing, because that like struck a chord somehow. Um, Miller, we, we've seen what? We've seen three splitters in a bullpen video with no data, and we saw in. one indoors. Okay, you're in on four <laughs> pitches that we've seen. I cannot wait <laughs> to get Savant on that splitter and just see big league hitters face it. Because we don't know if it's good. So everybody on X on Twitter right now that is saying, oh, this new splitter is nasty. We don't know that. I don't know. I think I might know. I don't think you know that. <laughs> Respectfully, I, just, I don't just, think you know. Did you hear that sentence? I don't know. I think I know. No. <laughs> what did no, you say no on the idea. last one? But it's the off season. I'm getting excited. You said something on the last episode that, that yeah. sounded like, oh, first step of admitting is admitting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, agree. I didn't even Agreed. realize I said that. It's one of the dumbest sentences that's ever been said. <laughs> the first part to admitting is admitting. Bing, bing I mean, up. that's that seems like an office quote that Michael Scott would say. Nailed it. Nailed um, it. How much more would Lizardo cost than Cowser and Joey Ortiz? Probably one more prospect, but not anyone crazy, right? Like maybe a. Maybe a Mac Horvath, right? Not he was just base. drafted. Yeah. You could send him over there. I mean, how many infielders do they need, right? I mean, do you need a third baseman when you have Gutter and Jackson Holiday on the left side of the infield for the and next Kobe 30 years? Mayo. Yeah. And Kobe Mayo and I mean, Connor Norby. And I mean, there's just so many guys. There's so many of them. So, yeah, I, I, I think if you throw in Mac Horvath, he's still far off, too. I would do that if I'm the Orioles. How about Vavra? Sure. They wouldn't feel this. No, I, I at all. I want to be clear. Can we just, just for exercise sake, let's say we just traded that package to the Marlins. Let's go over it again. You got it. Uh, Lizardo goes to Baltimore for Kowser, Ortiz, and... I like Mac Horvath a little bit more. Let me give you another name in a moment, but walk through the assortment right now. Do you think the uh, Marlins, I, I know I'm backtracking here. Do you think the Marlins would want a uh, pitcher as the third piece in that deal? They're getting two offensive pieces. They could. So go get like an Alex Pham. Maybe a Seth Johnson, 25. No, years. Johnson's too good. Johnson's too good. Too good. Um, Oz wouldn't do it. I think an Alex Pham or a Justin Armbruster. I like Armbruster. Yeah, let's do that one. Let's do him instead. So the the uh, Marlins get back one pitcher at least. Okay. Walk for the ex- yeah, for the exercise stake, let's also go get Dylan Cease to show how we can't, amazing we can't. this farm system is. No, we still could do it. Let's do it, right? If uh, now now we go get Dylan Cease again, this is not part of the GM episode. This is to illustrate how amazing the Orioles farm system is. Now, okay. for Dylan Cease, Heston Kerstad, yeah, Connor Norby, Connor Norby, Chase McDermott, bang. I, do they feel that either? I think you feel both of them. Yeah, you'd feel it. Right, but you're also getting Jesus Lizardo and Dylan Cease. Are you going to feel that? Of course. Yeah. And then your rotation, in whatever order you want, Lizardo, Cease, Bradish, Grayson. I mean, are we serious right now? And then you got John Means and Dean Kramer doing whatever the hell you want. That team can win the World Series. That team can win the World Series. They can even win the World Series just by adding Lizardo. 
But you add those two pitchers with that offense and and this bullpen. And remember, you're not really spending any money acquiring these guys, right? Cease's contract is a little bit expensive, sort of, right? You'd be paying him less per year than you would be Jordan Hicks. The Giants are. And then Lazardo, what is he making right now? Nine, ten? Uh, no, he's making five and a half, and he's got three years of control left. All right, yeah, it it does have to be Seth Johnson, Cowser Ortiz, Seth Johnson. Yeah, for Jesus Lazardo. So we we will only trade for one because we're not crazy, but they could trade for two and be perfectly fine. And it is funny too. Have you been reading some of what Orioles fans are saying? I think the uh, owner of the Orioles is getting a pass from these fans because the fans don't want to give up any of these prospects either. No, I got a text. I was talking to my buddy, Brendan Morton, who does great stuff for Masson. And I said, um, yeah, here we go. He said, hey, I don't think the fan base wants another Daryl or Nias to happen, who was the swap for Cole Irvin. And Arnaez can probably be the starting shortstop in Oakland this year. Like, I just don't think they want to get burnt. Who cares? Pir- Pirates fans. Pirates fans are very hesitant to move prospects because they're worried that they're going to get Chris Archer 2.0. Like, it takes just one trade to scare the shit out of a fan base. You're getting Dylan Cease and Jesus Lizardo. <laughs> You're getting one of Dylan Cease like and you Jesus Lizardo. Hope these prospects can turn into players like that, especially Lizardo. Especially Lizardo. That's why I'd prefer to trade for Lizardo over Cease. Not as expensive. It's going to cost more. Good. Good, because you can easily do it. Paying him five mil a year for the next three years? Well, it would escalate. It'd probably go five to nine to 15. But it's not expensive at all. No. Here's a control young pitcher, lefty, perfect fit. We trade those three. We don't feel it. And we could go win a World Series. Okay. Might need to add like another small piece, but... Three main pieces going back are Kowser, Ortiz, Seth Johnson, for yeah. Jesus Lizardo. And that's a haul. Marlins fans. That's awesome. That's a haul. I think a lot Orioles of Marlins can't. fans would say yes. You, just because, you know, Orioles, you know, don't really feel it because they have such a great farm system. That's an incredible package. It's an incredible package. No, and I mean, for a team that's going to run out either Xavier Edwards or Vidal Brujan at shortstop, I think they would be perfectly fine with saying yes to, to Joey Ortiz manning shortstop. Yeah, Ortiz would immediately be their starting Shortstop, Kowser would immediately be in their outfield. And then Seth Johnson is gonna could make an impact for you this year, correct? Probably. Yeah, he's 25 years old. He better. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's good. Yeah. So there you go. And now our rotation is Jesus Cesardo, Kyle Bradish, Grayson Rodriguez, John Means, Dean Kramer. Bang. And Wells is a six, man. I fucking like Wells. Do the Orioles like Wells, weirdly? Why'd they move him to the bullpen? Uh, he was hitting an innings limit. Yeah. So they shut him the, down for a little bit. The reason I think that they might not end up making a trade for any of these guys is they're going to look at their rotation and say, well, we have Bradish and Grayson. We have John Means. We have Dean Kramer. And we have Tyler Wells. What's wrong with that rotation, Orioles fans? We get to keep all of our prospects. And then Orioles fans are like, you're right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's not, let's be so safe, guys. Let's just crawl up in a blanket and not trade any of our prospects. Come on. Go That's for fine. it. Man, that's a huge haul. I feel like the Orioles would be quicker to move for Cease and it'd just be the duo of Kowser and Ortiz for Cease. I think you want them to trade Kowser and uh, Ortiz for Cease. You white No, nah, man, I've taken <laughs> I've taken all of that fandom out. Um, one more trade to pitch you has to do with the bullpen. And I don't think you need to spend on another reliever. As of right now, it's Kimbrell, it's Cano, Danny Coulomb, D.L. Hall, who's like, could be gross, nasty. gross. Yeah. Uh, CNL Perez was good last year. Jacob nasty. Webb, Dylan Tate, Keegan Aiken, Brian Baker, Nick Vespi. There are a ton of guys. Might I pitch you a reunion with Hunter Harvey? Sure. Hunter so Harvey was sexy. nasty. He sat 98 last year. Former Orioles first round pick. Had an ERA, I think, in the very low threes with Washington. And Washington needs warm bodies, particularly left-handed hitting outfielders. Kyle Stowers is not getting any run for the Baltimore Orioles. But in the last 163 games with Norfolk, Kyle Stowers, that's the last two years, 163 games. Kyle Stowers is hitting 256 with 36 homers and 127 driven in. 
I'm a casual. I didn't realize that Hunter Harvey had that great of a year last year. And yeah, Hunter Harvey was nasty. I didn't. I I thought he. I knew he was good. I've seen him before. I didn't think he was two eight two ERA in sixty innings, striking out ten per nine with like a three 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 expected ERA. I didn't know he was that good. Yeah, he sat ninety eight with his heater, nasty splitter. Like nobody hit more than two ten against any of his pitches. I don't think in that ballpark. If the Orioles didn't get Craig Kimbrell, we could have also made a trade for Devin Williams. We could have, um, but I kind of like just going to get Harvey on that reunion, and Harvey's going to be a lights-out setup guy for them too. So I, I think it can be Stowers and either Justin Armbruster or Alex Pham for it's Harvey. Too much. It's too much. It's not too much. He's a reliever. You're Relievers. Not Kyle Stowers and – Where's Stowers' value? I understand with the Orioles, but still. Like, they're not going to do that. That's too much. He's a reliever. He's been branded a quad A guy. I can't that I can't do. I can't. He's had I, Stowers. Really? I know doesn't have a ton of. I don't think I can do that. I think it would have to be less. I don't think that this guy's value is like that crazy. I like, think I you think might he, be overestimating Arm Brewster and Fam's value to the Orioles too. Yeah, maybe Arm Brewster and then another guy. I I, I can't trade Stowers in a deal like this. I would rather. He's a, just, he's a sitting duck, man. Then I would rather go get Devin Williams if I'm going to give up Stowers. He's a good player. No, 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 no. What do you mean, no? No. It, do you have Stowers' major league numbers in front of you? I can pull him up. No, yeah. I know he hasn't made much of an impact yet. No, like he's been really bad in his major league tenure. 48 yeah, I mean, big league games. He's got a 598 OPS. He had a negative 36 WRC plus last year. Yeah, like he he's had he's games. had multiple chances, but 34 games before that, and like he wasn't great. Like he has not been good in either of his big league auditions his value is low and now is the time to trade him i mean we can if if you're if you feel that good about it like i'm fine with it i'm he's always just, good with the orioles making trades and he's getting just, better yeah i just think if i'm the orioles like that feels too much to me i don't think so because like what happens best case scenario with kyle stowers this year he spends another year in norfolk yeah, I mean, they 20 have homers. They have to trade him. It's just, is Hunter Harvey the right deal? I think so. Hunter Harvey is solid, and Stowers would in turn know that he's getting big league chances with Washington, who needs left-handed outfield bats like they need air to breathe. Yeah. I think I, their outfield right now is Lane Thomas, Stone Garrett, Victor Robles. You're telling me that, like, he can't factor in? You ha also have to realize that if you are, you know, big on this trade, I'm down. Like, I don't need that much <laughs> convincing because I want the Orioles to make moves. And Stowers isn't going to play on the Orioles in 2024. Not because he isn't good enough. I think it's because they have no spot for him. Right. So I don't mind making the trade, but I can already see the comments is what I'm saying. I can already see them roasting us being like we're not giving up Kyle Stowers for a freaking reliever from the Nationals no I think you're I think you're gonna Maybe get I'm roasted not. yeah you're I think you're gonna get roasted for thinking that Kyle Stowers has a shit ton of value well how about this we'll see the comments the comments <laughs> will speak for themselves Orioles fans do you agree with Jack do you agree with me and whoever you don't agree with destroy them destroy one of us all right we're gonna make the trade send it in we're making the Lazardo deal too Yep. So that was Lazardo for Kowser, Ortiz, and Seth Johnson. So now the Orioles team looks like Adley Rutschman and James McCann as the catchers. Ryan Mountcastle, Ryan O'Hearn, Heston Kerstad as the first baseman, Kobe Mayo too. Second base can be Westberg, Jorge Mateo, Connor Norby. Third base, Ramon Arias, Mateo, Gunner. Shortstop, Gunner, Jackson Holiday. Outfield, Cedric Mullins, Austin Hayes, Santander, Kerstad, Ryan McKenna, Sam Hilliard. The starting rotation, Lizardo, Bradish, G-Rod, Means, Kramer, Tyler Wells is the six. And then the bullpen, Kimbrell, Cano, Hunter Harvey, Danny Coulomb, D.L. Hall, C.N.L. Perez, Jacob Webb, Dylan Tate, Keegan Aiken, Brian Baker, Nick Vespi. That team That's is so fucking good. That team can win the World Series. That team is so good. Like, I was thinking, you know, my Yankees are getting up there. We might end up winning this division. Then I went on Ross Resource, 
and looked at this Orioles roster, and I'm like, shit. No, we ain't. Yep. This, and then adding Lazardo and Hunter Harvey, yeah, this makes the Orioles arguably the best team in the American League. They can go deal for a frontline starting pitcher and not have it impact their 2024 season whatsoever offensively. The key word there is whatsoever. Just go do it. Do it. And go get yourself some Just Baseball merch in the episode description. I mean, come on. And if you don't want to spend any money, I get it. If you could just rate and review Spotify and Apple Podcasts, five stars, please. Leave a written review if you would be so kind. Genuinely, it really does help out the show. So if you have been enjoying all these episodes in the off season, please feel free, rate and review Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your pods. And if you are watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and don't forget to destroy one of us if you disagree. With I'm anti-trading stars for Hunter Harvey, Jack is pro. Tell us what you think in the comments. And maybe you hate the Lazardo trade. I don't know. Let us know in the comments. We're trying to get better. And we love you guys. Have a great start to the week. I was going to say have a great weekend. But it's a great start to the week. And we'll be back on Wednesday. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the Walker Bueller episode. And with that, thank you everybody.